In this video, I'll walk you through the process that I used for creating this ring band. Let's start with building the shank for the ring. I've cut two segments of 18 gauge half round, five inches for each, four 21 gauge squares in five and a half inches, and about 28 inches of 22 gauge half round. I'm going to start by taking my smaller half round and pinching both ends together, sliding my fingers down to find the center of the half round. From here I can take all four squares and slide my half round over the top of them and begin wrapping that half round around to bundle them together into the shape of the ring band. Once I've passed around several times, I'm going to take my pliers and flatten that bundle. I want to make sure that my half round starts in the center of my square wires, so I have equal working distance on both sides. I've coiled my half round five times around all the squares. From here, I can go ahead and add the half rounds into the ring band. I'm going to take both of my 18 gauge half rounds. I'm going to place them with the flat side facing down on top of the squares and slide them till they're about centered on the squares should be about a quarter of an inch on either side since I cut half inch shorter for those. From there I'm going to take my half round and coil it around them twice. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that into place and do the same on the other side. Next, I'm going to take my two half rounds that are sitting on top and I'm going to bend them 90 degrees off of the face of the squares and wrap five more times around my squares. I'm then going to flatten it again with my pliers. Then I'm going to flatten the half round on top of the coiled section and wrap those half rounds back into the coil two more times. It may be helpful to go ahead and put a mark on the first set of the pattern that we started in the direct center of the ring band. From here, I can work the same pattern out both directions, counting out to make sure that I have an equal number of sets to the pattern so that I'll have the same amount of wire to work on the face of the ring. I went ahead and did four more sets of the pattern here on the right side. I'll go ahead and do one more set on this side, walking you through it as I do. I want to make sure that I bend those at 90 degrees up first before wrapping five times around my squares. I 
it's important to make sure that you flatten the wires to make sure that everything sits comfortably in the coil as you work. I want to do the same with the half rounds, flattening them on top of and pinching just after the coil stops, forcing that wire into shape so it'll sit flat along the shape of our ring band before coiling it into the pattern. I will once again pinch it and bend those two wires 90 degrees to repeat the same process. Once I've completed the same amount of the pattern on both sides, I can double check for size on my mandrel. I want the two sections of coiled square to nearly touch on the size that I'm looking for. From there I can go ahead and snip the, sh the smaller half round endings short and flatten them to the top of the ring band. From here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and bend our half rounds that are sitting on the top of the band out of the way just so I can see what I'm working with, with the squares. On both sides, I'm going to bend 90 degrees into the square, just at the end of the coil, compressing that half round as much as possible so that it'll sit nice and tight, and then doing the same with the center two squares, bending them straight out to either side. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. My next step is going to be to go ahead and reconnect all of the squares together in a coil using one of our 18 gauge half rounds from the ring shank. Before doing so, I want to bend it into almost an oval shape so I can make sure that these squares will sit nice and flush together in that coil. I'm going to start by taking the half round on the right side that's closest to me, bending it back over the top of the ring, and around all four squares, pinching it flat so that those squares will sit properly in this coil as I go. Once I've passed two full rotations around, I can go ahead, cut that wire ending short, and flatten it down on top of the squares from there. Let's repeat the same process on the other side, taking my half round on the right, flattening it back down into the ring shank, coming across all four squares, flattening it to place, and 
trimming it short with the wire ending facing up. From here we can go ahead and reform the ring to a round, comfortable shape. I want to slide it onto my mandrel where it should sit slightly larger than the ring size I'm looking for. Next I'm going to take my pliers and pinch just after where my half round comes across to the front. Put a 90 degree kink into all four squares on both sides, bending them straight up off of the face of the ring. Where they'll be ready to reconnect onto the face of the ring from there. I'm going to set our ring shank off to the side now that it's completed and reconnected. I'm going to go ahead and put together the setting for this ring. To create the setting, I've selected three 3 millimeter Rotolite garnets, four 18 gauge half round wires cut in four inch segments, and two feet of 28 gauge round. I'm going to start the weave for our setting about an inch from one side, taking my 28 gauge, wrapping it around the half round once. I will have two half rounds sitting on top of each other with the flat side down for both wires. Next, and then our fourth half round on the left. I'm going to go down in between the section of two back up in between the section of two and our half round on the left go ahead and, and spiral around the left once back over the top of our two half rounds from there and back around my beginning wire. I'll show you a close-up of what that looks like. So here's the process for our weave. We'll try to hold it steady under this macro lens. I'm bringing my wire over the top of my rightmost half round, up underneath the section of two, over the top of my leftmost half round, curling it around that wire, then bringing it back up in between the left and the center two, back down between the center two and the right, and then around the right again to finish. I should have two parallel wires crossing over the top of my center two wires before moving on to the next step in the weave. I want to go ahead and flatten it to make sure everything sits nice inside its coil. And then I'm going to take the center two half rounds, bend them straight out of the weave so I can weave just between my two half rounds from there. The weave for this is fairly simple. I'm going to go ahead and bring my wire down in between the two wires, cross over to the left. I'm going to coil it around the left twice before bringing it back over the top, down in between the two wires, and then coiling it twice on the right. Let me go ahead and do that a couple more times and then I'll show you what it looks like under the macro lens.
there's that figure eight weave up close, crossing back and forth between each of the two half rounds with two coils in between each crossing back and forth. The spacing that these two coils adds gives a place for the culet, pointy section of the stone, to sit into the weave comfortably so that the face of the stone can be facing upwards and the culet facing down. You should have just enough weave so that your stone can sit on, on top of the weave and just barely go past the width of the stone. So this is about what I'm looking for. From here we're going to go ahead and reincorporate these two half rounds back into the weave. My right half round is sitting on top of the left in the coil, so I want that one to go first, crossing over to the left, and then taking the left, crossing it over that one to the right, causing them to braid together. Then I'm going to take that 28 gauge. I'm going to bring it straight across the two half rounds on the sides, coil it around once, and over the top of the two in the center. And then back to where we began. So the same three-part weave that we did at the beginning, just doing it once over the top of our half rounds that will hold the stone into the setting. From here I'm going to bend both half rounds back to the center and bend straight down. This causes the section that's sitting over our weave to bulge slightly so I can slip a tool underneath the cross section and create just enough space to slide a stone into the setting. I'm going to slide one of my road light garnets into place, gently press it down so that the culet of the stone goes down into the section of the weave, and bring both of my half rounds back up to the top, compress it with my fingers, I, from here I can adjust slightly the way that the half rounds will sit over the stone. I don't want to cover too much of the stone, but I don't want the stone to fall out of place. Here's what our setting looks like so far. I'm going to go ahead and complete the next two stone settings, and then I'll show it to you again under the lens. At this point, these are still pretty flimsy. They're easy to move, so I'm not too worried about covering up too much of the stone at this point. It can be adjusted later on. I went ahead and wove between my two outside half rounds again to create the underside of the setting. I just want to show you one more time the cross section between the center two half rounds that are holding the stone into place. You can see that the one coming off to the right is sitting above the one to the left where they cross over underneath the tie. I'm going to repeat that same thing, taking my one from the right across parallel to the one that's off to the left, and then bring my left one across, almost forming a 90 degree angle between these two half rounds that culminates in the center of the weave. From there I'm bringing my 28 gauge across both of my half rounds underneath, wrapping it around the outside one opposite, and then I'll bring it between the crossed half rounds and the half round on the left, and then down in between the crossed half rounds and the one on the right. And that creates the tie that secures those half rounds to the weave. Oh, 
Ooh. Perfect. And here's the completed setting with all three stones. You can see how that half round weaves back and forth on top of the stones that kind of creates the tension that holds them into place. Once I've completed the settings for my stones and made sure that I've woven twice on the ending side over the top of our two center half rounds, I can cut that wire ending short and flatten it with the ending on the bottom of the weave. My next step is going to be to take my outermost half round, bend it 90 degrees out to the side, making sure that the half round doesn't rotate. I still want the flat side to be facing down. I'm going to do that to all of my outside half rounds. Just bending that 90 degrees just below the weave on each side. I'm then going to do the same thing to the center half rounds, making sure that I bring the one that was crossing over to the right, off to the right, and of course the one that was crossing to the left, off to the left. From here I can pinch and play with the way that the half round covers the stones, just to make sure it's even on both sides. To make it a little bit easier on myself to connect these to the ring without quite as much extra wire, I'm going to go ahead and trim them to approximately the same length, just so they're a little easier for me to work with. And from here it's ready for us to connect it to the ring shank. Our setting is going to sit straight across the ring shank from here. You can take these two half round endings from the ring band into the design if you wish. I'm going to go ahead and cut them short and flatten them to the ring band. The kinks that we made in the ring as we were working should hold those to tension, so cutting them short at this stage without wrapping them around anything shouldn't cause them to slip or fall out of place. To connect our setting to the ring shank, I'm going to go ahead and place it like so, down in between the two sections of square. I want the center stone to be directly over the center in between our two squares, and I can fold it down onto the shape of the ring. I'm going to start to connect this to the ring shank by taking the half rounds that made up the outermost edges of our setting. I'm just going to pass those down through the shank of the ring. For them to sit comfortably next to each other on the inside of the ring band, I want one to be spiraling down towards the bottom of the ring and one up towards the center of our setting. Once they are cut and put into place, they'll sit nice and flush next to each other. Starting with my half round that will be going towards the center, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short and pinch that wire ending in on top of the ring band. 
Try to keep it in focus as I do this. As I pinch it into place, I do want to make sure that it doesn't slide off center like mine definitely just did. Before flattening it into position, I can make sure that I go back and adjust it. There we go. Into its proper place. Once it's there, I can go ahead and flatten that to the ring band, securing it into place. Take my second half round from the outside, bring that one up, going down towards the outside of the ring, trim it short, and flatten it to the band of the ring. From the inside, they should be sitting nice and next to each other. I'm going to go ahead and do the same process on the other side and then I'll show you a close-up. There we can see both sides of the connection. The half rounds should be sitting nice and flat next to each other, securing that weave onto the shank of the ring. Just like so. To connect to the next half rounds, I'm going to take whichever one is at the bottom. So in this case, my one going towards the left is underneath the one at the right. I'm going to pass it through the shank of the ring just next to our most previous half round. I'm going to bring it up. Cut it short and pinch it down to the top of the ring shank. And then I'm going to repeat the same process with my next wire, bringing it through, cutting it short, and pinching it to the top of the ring. Now that our setting is secured on both sides to the ring, we can go ahead and work on our squares. For this, I've cut two sections of 28 gauge round in 18 inches each. Starting with one of them, I'm going to take it, match the endings together, slide my fingers down to find the center, this little loop once again. I'm going to slide that loop over our section of squares, and I'm going to wrap it around the outermost square on either side. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around each side 10 times. Once I've wrapped around 10 times for each of those, I'm going to wrap those two squares on either side back together five times. I do want to make sure that they sit nice and parallel to each other, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten that coil of the two together. Repeat the same process on the other side. I 
I want the endings of these coils to be a little bit further past where our last stone is on that side. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap five more times around each section for a total of 10 times around the square by itself, 10 times around the two together. Once I've done that, I do want to make sure that I flatten it into place. So there we go, ending just below where our weave ends on each side. I can take my pliers and add a slight twist to the two squares together so that they'll actually almost be parallel to the ring band. From here I can go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. When I was telling you the number of coils around it, I realized I misspoke. It should be 10 times around the square by itself and 15 times total around the two squares. Once I have all of my squares bent into position and ready to go, I'm going to weave them back together with my two endings of 28 on each side. I've bent the tips out just slightly to make it a little bit easier to see as I'm weaving. I'm gonna start with my left, bringing it over the top and underneath the right hand side, coiling it around once, and then switching to my lower wire, bringing that one across, once around the left two squares, and then back to its original position on the right. Switching back to my other wire, bringing it back to its original position on the left, and then back to the right one more time. Switch to the lower wire, bring that one across, and around the left, and then back to its original position around the right wires. And then for the last time, taking my left wire and bringing it back around its original position on the left. Once I have that weave complete, I'm going to go ahead and just pinch it flat so that those wires all sit neatly inside. Just like so. And the weave, I'm going to go ahead and wrap my round wire 
one more time around each section before cutting the ending short. Pinching it flat. Where I can begin connecting these wires back down around the ring shank. Going to start with my outermost on the left, putting a 90 degree kink into it, and then doing the same with my outermost on the right. I'm going to bring the left one through first. I want to make sure that as I'm passing it through the center of the ring, that the flat side of the square is what's going to be facing someone's finger. I can bring it through and trim the ending short. Flatten it up onto the top of the ring band and then do the same with the right side. Just like so. I can go ahead and take my last two wires here, starting again with my left. I'm going to pass it through the center of the ring, making sure that my flat side of the square is facing towards the wearer's finger. Trim it short on the other side, flatten it onto the top of the ring band. And then do the same with my last wire. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side, and then I'll show you what it looks like under the macro lens. Here's a close-up view of what that looks like finished. You can see that some of the wire endings are slightly chewed by the pliers. I'll put a link to my video on how to clean those endings up in the description below. From the inside of the ring, you can see that all of the wires are neatly next to each other. There shouldn't be any sharp endings that would hurt the wearer's finger. And here we have the finished project. It's a nice, real slim profile ring design. It doesn't sit too high off the wearer's finger. It has a very cool parallel pattern. A special thank you goes out to all the names on your screen for supporting this channel through Patreon. What I'm doing would not be possible without your support. If you're interested in helping support the channel, follow the link in the description below this video. If you found this video helpful, leave me a like on the video. This helps me out a lot with the visibility of my videos and YouTube's algorithms. To be the first to know when I upload new content, Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thank you for watching and happy wrapping.